buck end again is with us, and the wind blows cold and chill. A nightly hawk frosts whiten o'er each valley and each hill. The shepherd lads are all at it with the useful collie dogs, busy parting all and shedding for the dozen of the hogs. Oh, grumpy she's been dieted on cow's new milk and grass. Her dung collected and stirred up in tear sickly mess. A glassful down each throat is teemed, then out on tear the fog. Four and twenty hours completes the dozen of the hogs. The last time the International Supreme Finals was held in England was back in 1990. That year, on the trial field at Annick, Gwyn Jones won both the qualifying trial held on the first two days of the International, then going on to a decisive win on the final day to clinch the Supreme Shield. After hosting the 1990 trial from the grounds of Annick Castle in the northeast of England, for 1993 the finals travelled to the western side of northern England to the green fields of Armathwaite, bordering the hills and fells of the Lake District. If you should chance to travel through this area, it will soon become obvious how important the sheep industry is to the Lake District. Hills rise up from the rivers, streams and lakes to meet the heavy clouds that bring the damp and rainy weather that is such a part of farming in this area of the country. The hardy hill ewes that graze these pastures are ideally suited to cope with the extreme conditions and the rough grazing. The farmers and shepherds are also well accustomed to the hard conditions that surround their lives. Along with their border collies, they work these rough hillsides the four seasons of the year. Last year, the finals were held in West Wales, on the flat dyke land of Tancastle Park, a few miles outside the town of Aberystwyth. The trial field at Tancastle has become well known for its windy and turbulent conditions, all but destroying the stands and many of the tents the previous time the International was held here, in the autumn of 1983. 1983 was a year, though, that saw the late Tot Longton and his clever Jess bring together a lifetime of trialling success by winning the Supreme Shield for England. In 1992, the weather proved slightly kinder, with only one miserable day to contend with out of the three. But it was to prove anything but dismal for the team of Bobby Dial and Wisp. Having won the International three years earlier at Margham Park in South Wales, Bobby and Wisp went on to complete the Aberystwyth course with a final score of 614 and 60 merit points. The highest scoring Welshman was Wynne Edwards with his nine-year-old Don, finishing the course with a fourth place position. The only Irish competitor to run with the 15 finalists was Hartford Logan with his four-year-old dog Dick. Hartford managed a worthy run, placing him in eighth position overall. 1992 also proved successful for the Welsh team winning back the team shield following the success of the Scottish handlers and dogs on the fields of Carmichael in Lanarkshire, the 1991 site of the International. 1993 was to become a memorable year for Paul Turnbull, the young Northumberland farmer who shepherds blackface ewes on the hills above Rothbury. Although Paul has successfully trialled both border collies and beardies over the past number of years, his success this year not only found him a position on the English team, but also won him the captain's position at the English National Trials in Yorkshire in August. The Scottish National was run in mid-August at Ballantree in Ayrshire. Here, Jimmy Wilson with his four-year-old Sam won through to clench the shield and to lead the Scottish team to Armathwaite. At this year's Welsh National in Powys, the difficult hill use proved more than awkward for many of the handlers and dogs. On the final count, Bertie Evans, with his four-year-old Taff, won through to clinch the national trophy and the captain's position for Wales. John McFadden, with his six-year-old Lynn, 
topped this year's Irish National by some 20 points. John was to captain a team made up of other well-known Irish competitors, Pat Byrne Sr. and Jr., Hartford Logan, George Lutton and David Lytle. Each year, the International is held over three days, with all 60 handlers competing on the first two days for a chance to run as one of the 15 finalists on the Saturday. This year is the first time that Ireland has managed to field a complete team of 15 competitors for the qualifying trials. The course for the qualifying run starts with an outrun to either side to fetch a group of five ewes some 400 yards from the handler's post. Once the ewes have been lifted, they have to be directly fetched down through the field and through a set of fetch gates and onto the handler's post. Then the ewes have to turn tightly around the post and onto the start of the drive. The drive starts with a 150-yard drive away through a set of gates and then turned for another 150-yard drive across the field through to a second set of drive gates. Once through these last gates, the ewes then are brought directly back to the shedding ring. Through this first part of the course, the handler must remain at the post, and only when the sheep have entered the shedding ring can the handler leave the post. To gain a top score, the sheep must be kept on a good line throughout the fetch and the three parts of the drive. In the shedding ring, two unmarked ewes have to be shed off within the boundaries of the ring. Once the shed has been taken, then the ewes are regrouped for the penning. At the pen, the handler must hold on to a six-foot long rope attached to the gate, while the dog works the ewes directly into the pen. For the final part of the run, the ewes have to be taken back into the boundaries of the shedding ring, where one of the marked sheep have to be singled off. Once the single sheep is shed, the dog must hold that sheep from the remaining group. Scoring for the qualifying trial allows 20 points for the outrun, 10 points for the lift, and 20 points for the fetch. The three parts of the drive add up to 30 points, finishing up with 10 points for each of the shed, pen, and single. This gives a total of 110 points per judge and a grand total of 440 points for the four judges. For this year's qualifying drive, the handlers have to work the sheep around the post and away to the right-hand side of the course, to the drive gates. The qualifying trial began on the Thursday morning with a total of 32 handlers competing on the first day. The continued success that Stuart Davison has had at the Scottish National each year has made him a regular member on their team. Once again this year, he represented the Scottish team with his seven-year-old hope. At last year's international, Stuart and Hope scored well through to the pen. Problems at the pen, though, cost both time and points, leaving too little time for the single to be taken. Time wasn't a problem, though, this year, scoring well with both the shed and the pen. Problems on the outrun lost Stuart some 20 of the 80 points, and then losing a further 54 and a half points on the drive, mostly from missing the cross-drive gates. This brought Stuart's final score down to 346 and a half. John Chadwick, with his rough-coated Asterton Nell, was the fourth competitor to the post on the first morning. His seven-year-old Nell is a daughter of Sidney Price's Davy, the 1987 Supreme Champion. As the first competitor to run for the Irish team, John managed to lose few points up until the cross drive. A poor line at the end of the cross drive with three U's missing the gates dropped his drive score by 32 points. He finished the course with a high scoring shed 
pen and single, losing only nine and a half points out of 120 for these three last sections of the course. Glyn Jones, who farms the mountains around Nantluid in West Wales, comes to this year's international with his young dog, Mac. At only two and a half years old, Mac was one of the youngest dogs to qualify to run at Armathwaite. Problems to the drive and cross drive cost Glynn some 35 points from an otherwise good run. He ended up with a final score of 344, some 22 points behind Irishman John Chadwick. Another Welshman to score well early on the Thursday morning was Wynne Edwards. Wynne came to this year's international with his 10-year-old Don, a son of his well-known dog Bill. As a team in the early 1980s, Wynne Edwards and Bill became the winners of the Supreme Championship Shield on two occasions, in 1981 and then again the following year in 1982. Although Wynne has not achieved such glory with Don, 1993 was to be the fifth consecutive year that Don has qualified for the Welsh team, no small achievement. In 1990 at Annick Castle, his qualifying run scored him the second highest score in the first two days of the trial and fourth place in the final day's competition for the Supreme Shield. Once again at last year's finals, he managed the highest placing for the Welsh team, another fourth position overall. The drive was to prove the costliest part of Wynne's run, having a poor line on the first part of the drive and then missing the cross drive gates before turning to the shedding ring. This cost Wynne 55 of the possible 120 drive points. His shed and pen helped to improve his score, finishing up with a final total of 365. David Lytle, a part-time farmer from the county of Donegal, was the first to the post following the noon break. He qualified at this year's Irish National with his nine-year-old Brit. Brit goes back to Brady's gym and is out of McGalliard's Jess. 
David's run with Brit proved to strengthen the Irish position on the first day, scoring well through the gather, drive and shed. A few problems at the pen helped to reduce his final score to 372, but this still gave him the highest score so far with some 16 runs completed. Alastair McRae and Nan came to Armathwaite after placing 11th at this year's Scottish National. Nan is a three-year-old bitch off Kenny Bramer's Craig and is out of McAllister's fly. Alistair has had a fair share of success as well. In 1984, he won the Scottish National with his black and white Merc, and then the International Shepherds title and second overall in the Supreme Championship in 1990 with Butte at Annick Castle. Another reserve championship came his way last year when he was running Corey in the finals of the Supreme Championship outside Aberystwyth. This was to prove the first high-scoring run of the day, topping the 400-point mark with 410. Only 30 points were lost on the whole course, some of which were lost when one of the U's broke away at the opening of the pen. When Martin Doherty came to the post, the 20th handler to compete on the first day of qualifying, the Irish team had already shown two of the highest-scoring runs of the day. Until Alistair McRae's run of 410, the 372 of David Lytle and the 368 run of John Chadwick topped the scoreboard. Martin's run with his four-year-old Moss topped the score of his two countrymen to finish up with 384 points, placing him in second place. With just eight seconds remaining out of the 15-minute time, Moss came through to take the single. Armourthwaite is almost home turf for the well-known handler, Raymond McPherson. From his farm at Hallbank Gate, he bought his three-year-old Tweed Hope Tip. Tip is out of Viv Billingham's holly and off Jeff Billingham's cap. Sixty-three points were lost on the gather. Many of these points were lost when the U's missed the fetch gates before reaching the handler's post. Tip maneuvered the U's around a well-scored drive and cross-drive, losing only 15 of the possible 120 and scoring one of the better drives so far on the first day. A perfect scoring pen and single left Raymond with a final score of 354. John Lightfoot came to the slopes of Carmichael in 1991, having won the Welsh National with his seven-year-old Black. At the Welsh National this year, he ran his three-year-old dog Cap off Alan Lloyd-Jones's Cap 
and Thomas's queen. His final score allowed him 385 and a half points for the day, allowing him a strong qualifying score. Mark Hallam was the last competitor to run for the English team on the first day of qualifying. His five-year-old Highgate Ben is a son of Sydney Price's Davy and out of his own Highgate Jip. His final score of 378.5 gave him the highest score for the English team on day one. Erwin Daniel, who farms on the Black Mountains above the Swansea Valley, has been a consistent competitor for the Welsh team. His successes on the trial field cover several decades, with his championship win at the International in 1960. Again last year, Erwin proved his abilities winning the Welsh National and captaining their team on their home turf at Tancastle Park. For 1993, Erwin had managed to qualify his seven-year-old fly the same dog that he ran so successfully last year. Fly goes back to Bobby Dial's well-known Dryden Joe. With the first day of qualifying runs completed, John Chadwick's early run of 368 kept top place until the 16th run, that of David Lytle and Britt, with a score of 372. A little later, Alistair McRae's 410 score with Nan was to prove the highest scoring run of the day. John Lightfoot's final score of 385.5 gave him a good chance at qualifying for the final day and placed him in third position on the Thursday, whilst Erwin Daniels' 407 gave him a sure chance for a run at the championship trophy on Saturday. On the second day of competition, the remaining qualifying handlers competed on the same course as the previous day's handlers had covered. Gareth Davis, who farms near Aberdare in Mid Glamorgan, was the third to the handlers' post on the Friday. With him came three-year-old Taff. Gareth had a good and steady run with no major problems. A few extra whistles on the outrun cost a few points, and then 24 of the 120 drive points went with a poor start on the first part of the drive. A perfect scoring single ended Gareth's run with 65 points lost and a final total of 375. As the last day of qualifying progressed, many of today's most successful handlers made their way to the post. One name that was missing from the Scottish team this year 
and one of the most successful and respected handlers to compete over the last 20 years was that of John Templeton. However, the Templeton name was well represented this year by John Templeton Jr., who farms with his father, milking Ayrshire cows and raising pedigree limousine beef cattle. John competed at Armathwaite with a five-year-old bitch called Nell, a daughter of his father's famous Roy, and out of W. Wilson's Jan. John's run marked well, leaving him with a final score of 374. The outrun taken to the left side of the field was the most costly part of the course, having to whistle Nell out twice before stopping short for her lift. This dropped some 22 points of the possible 80 on the outrun. Mervyn Williams has been a regular on the Welsh team for many years now. He came to this year's trial with his four-year-old Roy, the second Welsh handler to compete on the Friday. By the time the shed, pen and single had been completed, Mervyn had accumulated some 374 points. His outrun was to prove one of the highest scoring of the day, with only one of the 80 points lost. He also managed a perfect score on his pen and single. Arian Morgan, who had managed such a grand performance at the International last year, had once again managed to qualify for the Welsh team, coming fourth in the standings at the Welsh National with his four-year-old Smotten. Arian is the third generation of his family to compete in sheepdog trials. He lives on his father's farm just outside the town of Aberystwyth, but occupies his days at his butcher's shop, a profession that reaches back over 100 years in their family. In his spare time, he works and trains his dogs on the Welsh ewes and Welsh black cattle that graze his father's farm. Arian finished his high-scoring run with Smotten with a final score of 400 points, the third highest score so far on the two days. Andy Jackman farms in the south of England, in the county of Surrey. His five-year-old Don is the third son of Sydney Price's Davy to run at this year's International. One whistle was needed to redirect Don's wide outrun to the back of the sheep. The remainder of the run was fairly uneventful, losing a few points on the cross drive with the ewes running high, but still managing to navigate the cross drive gates. He finished the run with a high-scoring pen and single, and a final total of 376. Thomas Longton, the next English handler to compete, came to Armathwaite with his 10-year-old Tweed, a son of his well-known Bess. Thomas has been one of the most formidable handlers in England for more than 10 years. His expertise with both the singles and the doubles has won him many trophies. 
His last major success was at the English finals last year, where he clenched the national shield with his eight-year-old gem. Once again out of his famous little Bess, who won Thomas the Supreme Championship in 1986. Up until the start of the drive, Thomas had lost only 30 of the 200 points awarded for the gather. This good outrun and fetch had started his run on a positive note. Problems on the drive, with three of the U's coming back through the drive gates, helped drop his final drive score to 68 out of the possible 120. A further nine points were lost on the shed, but a perfect scoring pen and single kept his final score up at 351. Johnny Wilson's reputation is well known throughout the Border Collie circles around the world. Johnny has been a consistent handler for many years, managing to compete his dogs well amongst the very best. He won reserve champion twice at the International with his little bitch Peg. Finally in 1991 he struck gold with Spot, a son of his Peg, winning the Supreme Shield on the Green Hill side at Carmichael. Johnny came to Cumbria this year with a son of his spot dog, three-year-old Glenn. Johnny managed a high-scoring gather, losing only 21 and a half of the possible 200 total. Although the drive was the costly part of the run for this team, losing some 40 of the possible 120 points, Johnny managed to finish the course with a perfect scoring shed and pen, losing only four of the possible 40 on the single. This left him with a qualifying score of 374 and a half points. Reserve champion at this year's Welsh National was Glyn Owen with his six-year-old Meg. Meg is from his own breeding, out of fan and side by Sam. Glyn farms at Pennybont near the market town of Thundredot Wells.
His final score of 394 and a half described the good solid run that he managed and the second highest score on the Friday, five and a half points behind the earlier run of Irene Morgan. Paul Turnbull came to the international leading the English team. His run with Knapp scored 373 and a half, narrowly finding him a chance at the Shield, and the only 1993 national champion to be so fortunate. At the end of the second day of competition, Arian Morgan with Smarten had managed the highest scoring run of the day, and in third position behind Alistair McRae with Nan and Irwin Daniel with Fly over the whole qualifying competition. The Irish handlers had not been as successful on the Friday as they were on the Thursday. The highest score on Friday for Ireland came from their captain, John McFadden, with his five-year-old Lynn and a total of 357 points. One of the forgotten heroes at these national and international trials has to be the farmer that supplies these sheep for the competition. Some people may think that a large group of these sheep are just dropped off at the site of the trial the day before the competition, only to be returned home again once the trial has been completed. This is not the case though. To allow each handler as fair a run as possible, the sheep are daily gathered from the hills and brought to the trial field. Once the morning runs have been completed, a new bunch are delivered for the afternoon runs. This allows the handlers at the end of the day the same quality of sheep to work as the earlier handlers of the day. The proof, they say, is in the pudding. The sheep gathered for this year's trial proved to make the trial the success it, that it was. They were supplied by a former national and international trialist, George Hutton. George and his family farm the rough hills above Setma Banning, running Swaledale sheep and pedigree limousine cattle. The ewes on these hills are regularly worked by the dogs of Setma Banning, some of the best dogs in the area, and it made all the difference to the way they responded on the days of the trial. Local hill farmers, such as George Hutton, rely on the local livestock markets to sell their year's work. The Penrith market, like so many others throughout northern England and Scotland, have to work hard to ensure the very best service for their producers of their area. This involves catering to every aspect of the livestock industry, whether it's the sale of quota, breeding stock, fat stock, or feeder animals. A certain day of each week is assigned to a different commodity. Mondays at Penrith is fat stock day. It begins with the pig sale at nine in the morning. Whilst this goes on, the fat cattle are being identified and prepared for their sale. The lamb sale is the last to start, and in the fall of the year the sale carries on well into the afternoon, selling several thousand lambs each week. The finals of the International Brace Championship are held at noon on the Thursday and Friday of the qualifying trials. Here, two handlers from each of the four countries compete for the championship position. In 1992, John Griffith with Sweep and Moss 
two dogs of his own breeding, managed to claim the victory for Wales with a final score of 477, some 50 points ahead of John McFadden for Ireland. The eight handlers that competed for their countries for 1993 were, on the Thursday, Tim Longton, Julie Deptford, John Griffith, and John McFadden. On the Friday, Robbie Dean, Pat McGettigan, Glyn Jones, and Brian McConnell. The course for the Brace Championship covers an outrun of 800 yards for 10 sheep. Each of the dogs has to take one side on the outrun, ideally reaching the sheep at the same time. Once the two dogs have reached the lift point behind the sheep, they are allowed to cross sides, but from that point on they have to remain on their own sides and no crossing is allowed. Once they have reached the sheep, they must then be fetched in a straight line down the hill and through the fetch gates set some nine yards apart. Once through the fetch gates, the sheep must continue in a straight line to the handler. At the end of the fetch, the sheep must be worked around the handler and onto the start of the drive. The drive covers 600 yards, and here the handler will direct the dogs to work the sheep around a triangular course and through two sets of gates, and finally back to the shedding ring. The drive is finished when the sheep enter the shedding ring. Throughout this first part of the course, the handler must remain at the handler's post. The shed for the brace competition is quite different from that of the singles. Here, ten sheep have to be split into two groups of five. This must be done within the boundaries of the shedding ring. Once completed, the group that is driven off is left with one dog, whilst the other group is penned in a diamond-shaped pen with an opening five feet wide and with no gate. Once the dog has worked the sheep into the pen, it must then remain at the opening to prevent the sheep from escaping. Once the first pen is completed, the second group of sheep must be regathered and penned in the second pen. The scoring for the brace finals are 40 points for the outrun, 20 for the lift, and 20 for the fetch. There are 30 points awarded for the drive and 10 for the shedding. Finally, there are 10 points each for the pens, for a grand total of 140 points per judge and an aggregate score of 560 for the four judges. The first handler to the post on Thursday was Tim Longton with Glenn and Becker, both 60 years old. Glenn is off Sydney Price's Davy and out of Powell's Fly, whilst Becker is off Beddoe's Chip and out of Beerman's Becker. With one of his dogs taking a good line on his outrun, the other came in about halfway out, losing all but eight of the 80 points. Some redirection was needed, but eventually both dogs went on for a good fetch to the handler's post. A top-scoring drive helped him firm up the points that were lost on the gather. 16 of the 40 shedding points were lost, with the first shed dividing six and four sheep. Both pens had one ewe break away, but the final pen was made, giving a final total for the run of 422. Julie Deptford came to the International as the reserve for the Scottish team, with her two dogs, Bess and Nell. This is the same two dogs that won Julie the Scottish National Brace Championship last year. Julie's run took the place of John Campbell, who won reserve champion position in the Scottish Brace Finals this year. The outrun at this year's Brace Finals was to prove to give a lot of problems. Although Julie lost many of her gather points, at least one of her dogs managed to lift the ewes with her second dog joining the fetch partway through. This was obviously not ideal, but still allowed her to continue on to complete the course. From the start of the drive, she managed to bring things together, finishing up with a high-scoring drive, losing only 12 of the 80 possible points, and finishing up with a perfect scoring pen and shedding. Her final score, though, of 340, 
was over 80 points behind Tim Longton. John Griffith has become a regular in the Brace Championship. His work with his dogs also extends to giving courses on dog handling at the local agricultural college. He competed this year with Sweep and Moss, the pair that won him the International Brace Championship last year in Wales. John also had problems on the outrun, ending up with a final score on the gather of 209 out of 320. The remainder of the course went well, finishing up with a perfect scoring penning and losing just one point on the shed. This brought his final total of 426 and the highest scoring run on the first day. The first Irish handler to compete was John McFadden, but problems on the outrun forced John to retire. On the second day of competition, the winners of the National Brace Championship took to the post. First up was the Englishman Robin Dean with his litter mates Dave and Nip, sired by Thomas Longton's Tweed and out of Robin's own Bess. As with all the outruns so far in the Brace Championship, Problems with the outruns to the pickup point dropped the score on the gather to 147 out of the 320. Once around the handler's post, things improved. A good drive and cross drive, and then onto a successful final part of the course, realized Robin a score of 342. The Scottish brace champion for 1993 was Pat McGettigan with Todd and Sable. Pat won the 1991 International Brace Championship at Carmichael with a final score of 418. But for this year, problems on the outrun forced Pat to retire. The final two competitors in the Brace Championship, the Welshman Glyn Jones and the Irishman Brian McConnell, both were forced to retire after problems with their outruns. By the end of the second day, the Brace Championship points looked like this. John Griffith managed to claim the Brace Championship shield for the second year in a row with his two homebred dogs, Sweep and Moss. Reserve champion position went to Tim Longton with Glenn and Becker with 422. And in third position was the English national Brace champion, Robin Dean with Dave and Nip. It is not only the livestock sales that offer the chance to see the class of livestock of the area, but throughout the British Isles, county shows bring together the highest quality of breeding stock. Close to the south coast of Britain, the Dorchester show offered a glimpse of the many breeds found throughout the country. Some were the more traditional breeds, whilst others showed some of the exotic and also some of the rare breeds of the area. One of the smallest breeds of cattle is the Dexter breed. A large showing of this breed offered onlookers an opportunity to see a truly traditional part of English agriculture. Another show of great worth is the Great Dorset Steam Fair, one of the largest, if not the largest, steam fair in Europe. Covering well over 500 acres, this show has turned into a meeting place for some of the finest early agricultural and fairground equipment to be found anywhere. Thank you. 
And so, with all the qualifying runs completed, the final day was at last upon us. Here are the handlers and dogs that managed to successfully qualify for the chance at the Supreme Shield. The course for the Supreme started with an outrun to gather the first group of ten sheep some 800 yards away. Once the sheep had been lifted, then they were brought down the course through the fetch gates and onto the post, 25 yards through the fetch gates. The fetch gates were set nine yards apart in the center of the field. Once the sheep had reached the post, the handler then redirected the dog for the second group of sheep. Once the dog had reached the second group of sheep, they were brought down the course and through the fetch gates. At this point, the first group of ten and the second group of ten sheep were then regrouped. Once all twenty sheep were then regathered, they had to be brought around the handler's post and onto the start of the drive. The drive was in three parts over a triangular course of six hundred yards. The sheep were first driven away to the left-hand side of the course through a set of gates some nine yards apart. Once through these gates, the sheep had to then be turned for the cross drive. Once through the cross drive gates, the sheep were then brought back to the shedding ring. If either of the gates were missed, no retry was allowed. The shed had to be made in a ring forty yards in diameter. Once the drive has been completed and the ewes had entered the shedding ring, then the fifteen unmarked sheep had to be shed off from the five marked sheep. This had to be done in the boundaries of the shedding ring. If any marked sheep left the boundaries of the ring and joined any of the unmarked sheep, the marked and the unmarked sheep that they had joined had to be brought back into the ring for reshedding. Until the fifteen unmarked sheep had been shed off, penning was not allowed. Once shed, the five marked sheep had to be driven by the dog to the pen and worked into the pen. The handler was not allowed to assist the dog in taking the sheep to the pen. The pen was six foot by nine foot, with a six foot rope attached. Once the handler reached the pen, he had to stand at the pen holding the rope while the dog worked the sheep into the pen. Once the use had entered the pen, the gate was closed. The point score for the Supreme was twenty points for each outrun, ten for each lift, and twenty for each fetch. This gives a grand total of a hundred points for the gather. The drive has a total of forty points, the shed twenty and the pen ten. No points were awarded for either the shed or the pen when either of these parts of the course were not completed. The total score for the run was a hundred and seventy and an aggregate for the four judges of six hundred and eighty and a thirty minute time limit. The opening run for the championship shield was that of David Lytle with his nine-year-old Brit. David had been the 16th handler to compete on the first day of qualifying and with his 372 score only narrowly managed to find a place in the finals.
both outruns dropped a fair amount of points for David and Britt, but it was his second outrun that caused the most problems, dropping 60 of the 80 possible score. Once the ewes were regrouped at the end of the second fetch, David went on for a successful drive, shed and pen, finishing the course with 183 points lost for a final total of 497. Alistair McRae's run with Nan on the Thursday managed to win this pair the trophy for the highest scoring run of the two qualifying days. Their highest qualifying score early on the first day placed them as one of the earlier handlers to the post for the championship.
By the time Nan had finished the second fetch, she had made two good outruns with little redirection from Alistair, and then going on to drop just 35 of the 160 points on the fetches. Both gathers had accumulated some 344 points out of the possible 400. This put Alistair in a good strong position going on to the start of the drive. Only 12 points were lost throughout the drive, turning tightly around the gates before returning the ewes to the shedding ring. The shed lost some 28 points and then managing a clean pen, completing the course with a 580 score and very little time remaining. Martin Doherty's run with his four-year-old Moss suffered from problems at the start of the course. Both outruns took a great amount of time, but still managing to eventually find the sheep and complete both fetch sections. Eventually time ran out for Martin before completing the shed, leaving him with a score of 334 points. It was still a grand attempt for the young Irishman, the youngest handler competing in this year's trial managing to realize some 384 points in his qualifying run and winning a position to compete for the Supreme Shield on such a demanding course. John Lightfoot, the winner of the Welsh National in 1991 with Black, managed to qualify with some 385 and a half points with his three-year-old cap and so advancing to this year's finals. Unfortunately, difficulties at the start of the course forced John to retire. Mark Hallam was the first of the English handlers to compete on Saturday. His five-year-old Ben is a son of Sydney Price's Davy and out of Mark's own Highgate Jip. On the first part of the course, up to the start of the drive, Mike had lost some 86 points out of a possible 400, and so a good start to the run. A low line on the cross drive, with half the ewes missing the cross drive gates, lost Mark three quarters of his drive score. By the time the gate of the pen closed behind the five marked sheep, Mark had lost some 193 points ending up with a final score of 487 to put him in third place with five of the runs completed. Erwin Daniel and Fly, a seven-year-old daughter of Dryden Joe, had completed the qualifying trials with a 407 score, the second highest behind Alistair McRae and Nan. Irwin was the second handler to represent Wales on the final day. An excellent first outrun with just one redirection scored 76 out of 80. A poor line on the first fetch cost this pair some 28 points before starting out on the second gather. Although Fly took the command straight away for the second group of sheep, a further look back command put Fly over the wall and well into the next field. 
This lost all but eight of the 80 points given for this part of the gather. By the time the second group of ewes had reached the end of the fetch, some 121 of the 400 points had disappeared. The final score for Irwin and Fly of 482 put them into fourth place behind Mark Hallam with still nine dogs left to run. Gareth Davies had much the same problems as did his teammate running before him. On the second outrun, Taff left the course before reaching the lift point, costing not only points but also consuming valuable time. He went on to complete the drive, running out of time in the shedding ring, scoring a final 357 score. John Templeton's second day score of 374 narrowly edged him into the final day. As the second of the four Scottish handlers <coughs> in the finals, he ran his five-year-old Nell, a daughter of his father's Roy. Nell's second outrun was the most costly as she crossed the course before picking up the 10 ewes on the top of the hill. Other minor problems throughout the course lowered his score to 474 points, but still a good start to a no doubt promising future. Mervyn Williams and his four-year-old Roy had also qualified with a score of 374. From his farm on the Hereford Radnor borders, Mervyn has become a familiar face on the international trial fields of Britain, representing his country of Wales. Problems at the start of the course and then again in the shedding ring ran Mervyn out of time before completing the shed for a disappointing final score of 395. The tenth handler to run on the Saturday and the fifth handler for Wales was Arian Morgan from Aberystwyth on the west coast. Arian has successfully run his five-year-old rock at last year's international, and so managing to qualify for a second consecutive year for a chance at the Supreme Shield. Arian's final score of 503 points put him in second place behind Alice McRae's run with Nan. Some 84 points were lost on the second outrun from the possible 160, and then losing a further 46 points on the drive, with two-thirds of the ewes missing the cross-drive gates. At the start of the shed, he managed to take 13 of the 15 sheep on the first draw thus leaving him with two more to take off before going on for an excellent pen, losing only eight points of the possible 120 on these last two parts of the course. Andy Jackman, 
was the second of the three English handlers to compete. He came into the Supreme after qualifying with a 376 score on the previous day. His five-year-old Don is a son of Sydney Price's Davy. The gather to the first group of youths scored Andy 162 points out of a possible 200, and then 142 on the second gather. Problems in the shedding ring taking off the last two remaining youths ran this pair out of time as they headed for the pen, with a final score of 470. When Alistair McRae came to the post with Glenn, he had already scored a high 580 with Nan earlier in the day. Alistair seems to have mastered the outruns that had caused so many problems with a number of the other handlers. Once again with Glenn, he immediately took the look back command for the second group of sheep, only losing 10 of the 80 points, and eight of the 80 possible points in the first outrun.
By the end of the run, Alistair and Glenn had lost 150 from the possible 680, some 50 more than with his run with Nan. This gave Alistair a final score of 530. Johnny Wilson won the International at Carmichael in 1991 with Spot, a son of his well-liked little bitch Peg, who partnered Johnny to winning the Shepherds Championship in 1984, 1986, and then again in 1987. For this year, he managed to qualify his three-year-old Glenn, a son of his supreme champion, Spot.
Glenn went out on a good start to his first outrun, only to come in halfway through the run. Several whistles put him back out, but by this time 18 points had been lost. Like with so many other handlers, the second outrun proved costly. Here 38 of the 80 points were gone before arriving at the back of the ewes. A low cross drive and then with half of the ewes missing the cross drive gates meant another 35 points were lost. A very clean shed and pen gave Johnny top marks for these two parts of the course, closing the gate for a final score of 552. The next handler to the post was Glyn Owen and Meg, a six-year-old daughter of his own Sam and Fan. He came into the final day with a high-scoring qualifying run of 394 and a half, and the final Welshman to compete. I'm sure every handler questions their bad fortune after such an important run as in the finals. For Glynn, the second gather proved to be his downfall. The high score on every other part of the run would have given Glynn one of the best runs of the day. Unfortunately, with Megs crossing the course for the second group of sheep, some 60 of the possible 80 points were gone. Then once again, when the ewes were lifted, they came offline on the fetch, missing the gates so losing a further 35 points. A top scoring shed and pen left Glynn and Meg with a 505 final score. The final handler to qualify was the Northumberland farmer, Paul Turnbull, with his eight-year-old Nap. Nap goes back to Paul's own Craig dog and is out of M. Graham's Jess.
Paul's run turned out to be one of the most consistent runs of the day. But as well directed as it was, the 101 points that were lost put him one point behind Alistair McRae's run with Nan for a final total of 579. This is how the scores of the two top runs compared. The final scores gave Alistair McRae and Nan the supreme trophy, with Paul Turnbull and Naff just one point behind. Glyn Owen came out as the highest scoring Welshman in fifth place, with David Lytle and Britt winning the top score for the Irish team. The Stirling Team Shield was won by Wales, with Ireland in second place.